Welcome in to the Bro Four Squad podcast. It is October, and it is time for Halloween. Thank you so much for checking us out. This is our movie commentary of the 2018 version of Halloween. I am your host, the Mayor Jeff Hornacek, joined as always by our fellow horror hound, the lawyer, our legal counsel, Ronnie Cycli. We are watching this right now. We actually rented it on uh, Amazon. But I'm hoping, as you are listening to this, that possibly Peacock has decided to put it up because it would just make sense and make everyone's life easier. We currently have our movies paused at the 24-second mark. Uh, Universal's logo is fully up on the screen, so while you get your movies queued up there, let's toss it over to Ronnie Cycli. Ronnie, it's been a few years since we revisited this movie. We did a review of Halloween Kills. I think we're very excited for Halloween Ends, which we'll get into. What do you remember about this film? Because... For me, the plot outside of the construct of the podcast element is honestly a little hazy. Yeah, I don't remember much, but I do remember a few things. Being very impressed with Danny McBride. I was... Yeah, right? Right, like that's still... I still am shocked that he did this, right? Like, I mean, of all the things Danny McBride is, um, I I remember that, like being walking out of the theater, being like, I didn't expect it. I think I had low expectations, especially for everything we've gotten in the Halloween franchise. So this movie exceeded those expectations. I enjoyed it thoroughly, um, but I am excited to revisit it. I won't go too much into it because I'm sure we'll talk about it, but wasn't the biggest fan of Halloween Kills. Very excited about Halloween Ends. So, you know, like I said, I think this got it started on the right, in terms of bringing it back. I think it did, uh, got it off on the right note. Yeah. Well, uh, let's take a stab at it. Great pun. All right. We are going to press play again. I don't get it. 20, it's because of, I'll explain it later. 24 second mark in three, two, one, play. Sorry if you heard my dog whining there because uh, she clearly doesn't like scary movies, I guess. I thought she was uh, excited about this. She's more Ran afraid of for the door. She's more afraid of the fan of the Hellraiser franchise. She's like, is it Hellraiser? No, no. She's like, Man, I'm out. I am out. I don't waste my time with this. I didn't realize this was Blumhouse produced. It, it's so, the, the, I don't know, I think you and I have talked about this, uh, maybe on the reviews. And for those horror heads like us, um, there might not be a franchise that has been all over the place. Yeah. Like Halloween. Well, and that's kind of like when we talk about the, uh, it's not a, it, is this technically a Lega sequel or like, is that, are you allowed to like knock other movies out of canon when you do that? They've, well, they have done it, whether you agree with it or not. I think that's the point of discussion here, right? They, <laughs> they literally knock the movie, I, almost all of the movie. They lock Halloween 2 completely out. Oh, which is, I think Halloween 2 is an awesome idea and really doesn't fuck with the canon too much. Like, they could have kept it. I think it's like, I get it, like, why they do it. Um, like, if you want to bring new talent into a movie and be like, hey, you're beholden to, like, these seven sequels, most of which aren't good. It's just makes everyone's job a little bit harder. But it's also like when you have like that relative that's just like kind of a fuck up and is annoying at like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like you're still related to them, you know, like we can't act like they're not part of the family. So I think we shared this and maybe this is something we can put on the YouTube video uh, when we when we we release this. But do you remember there's that image of the, the time like of the different scenarios of how Halloween works? And there's like three or four because they like it's like you either accept Halloween two and if you accept Halloween two, these movies are valid. If you don't accept Halloween two, oh, it's like these a flow chart, are valid. right? It's like a flow cool. chart. That's and really the only constant is Halloween. Mm-hmm. And it, there's like I think there's three or four different paths you can take. Well, I think there's even a line in Halloween Kills about. So spoiler alert for Halloween 2, not the Rob Zombie one, obviously the John Carpenter one if you haven't seen it. But it is revealed in that movie, which now is not canon, Mm -hmm. that Laurie and Michael are brother and sister. Mm -hmm. And there's a reference to that in Halloween Kills. Like, I I thought she was Michael Myers' sister. And someone goes, oh, no, that was just a rumor. Yeah. Which... Again, I get the play there. Like, it's topical. It's yeah. it's but meta I a little the, bit. The concept of Halloween 2 is cool. Like, same night, literally, like, probably, like, the second yeah. after the first one ends, she goes to the hospital, and he just won't fucking stop. Because he wouldn't fucking stop. That would be, no. like, his thing. He'd be like, where are you at now? It's the thing is, like, I, I think it's, you know, we talk a lot about a Star Wars fans. The retconning. And, and how we feel about that as people who 
we obviously didn't grow up with the original franchise, but we grew up with the prequels and we grew up as fans. Um, and, and there's the people who enjoy the sequel trilogy thoroughly. There's people who think Reddit Return of the Jedi, oh, sorry, Return of the Jedi, uh, The Last Jedi is one of the best. It's wild. But... Star Wars movies. I mean, like critically, it was what 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. It is one of the highest rated. I didn't but, know that. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, but anyway, the whole point of this is the retconning can be divisive to all the fan base. And I feel like the longer you're a fan, the more the more you struggle with it. So the element here, kind of to bring it to a new generation, I know Geiger really liked, he couldn't be on tonight, but he was a huge fan of this movie, was like, what's the uh, more contemporary entry point to the franchise, right? And having people like want to make a true crime podcast about Michael Myers is not only incredibly topical but to me it's super fucking interesting because our <laughs> fascination with the macabre and like the horrific like it's voyeurism really like that's the society we live in people would hear about the story of michael myers killing basically half of haddonfield illinois torturing this girl laurie strode and i i hate to say that i'm probably one of them but i'd kind of be like that's really interesting <laughs> dude and he'd probably have fans he hundred percent would. People would be like, "No, he was he was like abused." Probably. I don't, you know. I and I do love that. That sounds like, a shithole right. anyway. Like what? I do love this opening. I mean, I will say, getting to that point because you're absolutely right. It's topical. It's accurate. It's relatable. Um, and we're just so teased with seeing the human Michael Myers right here. Yeah. This guy looks like Scottish Dave Portnoy, the CEO of Barstool. <laughs> You're not wrong about if that. If he drank, like, 11 Guinnesses. I mean, like, it is so, like, I mean, like, think about the impact. I mean, maybe, you know, cereal was, like, the OG of yeah. these, right? And then, I don't know if you ever listened to cereal or, like, even the impact, but they just released the guy, Anand, who was accused of that murder and has been in prison for 15 years. Oh, yeah, years. I did actually hear that. And he just got released. And I, I'm not going to say it's because of cereal that he got released, but, I mean... It might not be the reason, but you're telling me that the attention to his case maybe would have never been what it is. 100%. Um, and I'm not trying to say Michael Myers and Anant are, you know, similar people, but this podcast being, you know, doing what they're doing here, 100% accurate. So does the, I'm assuming the psychiatrist, that they're like that, the lead guy at the center knows he brought that in? I don't know, because I feel like I'd be really pissed off if I was his uh, psychiatrist. Yeah trying to stir up some shit here huh or you're just like okay maybe we can get a reaction out of him now we come very close to seeing his full face you get like not even the profile really in this and i think that yes. even a little more in the second one we've debated this a lot do you think we will see it in halloween ends and do you want to i i don't want to because i don't think it's something that can at all satisfy what 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 do we get after out of no i think his him? face to us is the mask you know yeah and the thing is if you see him there's not one thing about seeing his face that would be satisfying to anyone yeah that's true it it would be just like oh that's the face like you know it, it's like seeing a monster in a horror movie the suspense goes away once you see the alien or the you know you know what i mean yeah. like think cloverfield you know yeah but i will say while i I yeah, love the intro. You will see his face. Iconic. Oh, yeah. You always have to do it. Um, while I could see us getting the face, I prefer we get a word out of him. Wow. Or a last That'd be sentence. Cool. You know, maybe he was, maybe he says something like, Lori, you dropped your purse all those years ago. I was just trying yeah, to. Yeah, I meant you have your credit card here. Yeah, I was trying to get this to you. It's I don't know why you kept fired for 48 years, but. You Sorry, never... people kept getting in my way, and I had to, like, move God. them out. Some real assholes, too. So what do you think? Do you want the face? Do you want anything? Is there something that would be satisfying to you? No, I've gone back and forth on this, and I love the original Halloween movie and even the second one, and I'm a pretty big fan of this one and, and the new ones, but I wouldn't, I don't know if I would describe myself as, like, a diehard in the sense of, like, there's an expectation I have for Halloween ends that if it's not met, I'll be like, dude, I'm fucking angry. I think I just want to see another good horror movie, and I guess I'm just more interested than anything. I know that, like, quote-unquote ending a franchise these days is like, yeah, okay, sure, bro, is what yeah. fans basically say. Because we've even heard it with Halloween before. But um, 
the title and sort of I feel like this was maybe the first time they actually had a multiple movie plan going into it. So I'm just interested to see how that ends. Kathleen Kennedy, you hear that? You can make three movies and actually have a fucking plan where they end up. No, no. 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 The, I, I, the, here's the thing. You're absolutely right. There's no, just because they end this story doesn't mean you can't do 80 different versions of it. And what we said in the beginning, this they've already done it. We already have four different storylines you could follow right. through this franchise. So, I mean, if you want to include you know, all the other remakes in the 2000s and everything like that, then what, the, it's too late. Hollywood's going to redo these forever. I mean, we talk about that with Saw all the time. Um, Star Wars is literally living that right now. And Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, I believe is almost like an anthology film. Like, Michael Myers isn't even in it. It's about, like, these masks that possess people. I want to watch it. I kind of do, too. That one is on it Peacock, is, actually. Yeah. I saw it on Peacock, and I know what people feel about it because it has nothing to do with Michael Myers. Maybe when you come back from your trip, we can do a commentary on it. I'm down. One. I just want to, like, yeah, I'm extremely curious about it. Like, because also the thing, I mean, I know why they would slap the Halloween on it, but to make it like a, a three, it, like, in what fucking world <laughs> is this yeah, at just all? Call it like, call it Halloween, a Halloween story. Well, like, like it like, makes just... no god. It'd be like if I, we made a movie and it was like. Uh, I don't know, Jurassic Park 7, and it's just about, it's like an <laughs> office comedy. It's like There's the, no dinosaurs at all. Right, why is the number in here? It's not sequential to anything. <laughs> at one point, one of them said their favorite dinosaur was a Tyrannosaurus Rex. That was the only that reference counts, to dinosaurs. That counts. Sorry, I don't know about your subtitles on Amazon. Anytime there's supposed to be an apostrophe, it has a quotation. Look, man, you don't need me to talk about I know. Well, you're all subtitle writers. You have researched this uh, extensively. This is my dream job. If money was no object. Did I tell you I like filled out like the or took like the test for one of those? And I I don't have many skills in my life, but I actually think I'm a pretty adequate typer. Same. Like in terms of words per minute. Like I'm I kind of pride myself on that. I gave credit to our middle school. Yeah, for sure. Our public middle school. Yeah. But I did I got like or I like I failed the test or whatever they had. I was like, what the fuck? No. See, that makes no sense to me. What do you like if you can you're not doing this live? Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> if I make a mistake, I'll just fucking delete it. Okay, so the Lori uh arc here, it's it kind of been I I think this actually kind of started the trend of like the 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 empowered female character for like a couple years in movies, which I think it's still continuing, but where it's like she basically has resigned her life to like just beating the shit out of people or like one person. What did you think of where they took her arc here? I think it works. I think it really didn't work in Halloween kills. Yeah. That I think, I mean, and so I won't, I won't have, I won't say, I will save that discussion for when we do a commentary on that. But I, I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it goes against like what scream five just recently did with Nev Campbell's character where she just, moves on with her life and goes somewhere far away and mm -hmm. just like i'm not gonna ever go back to that town but i think the difference is ghost faced was just a different killer every time michael myers is this whatever i don't know that's a beauty of michael myers we don't know what he is um but she always knows he is going to at some level come back for her so speaking of like Jamie Lee Curtis, of course, reprising her role here, and she's actually been down to fucking play ball, man. She's come back a lot for this franchise, and I'm sure regrets yeah. it in some of the films she's done. But I didn't yeah, know they this pay at enough. All. I gotta imagine. Oh, for sure. This is a Horns fun fact um, from IMDb. This was totally news to me. Maybe you knew about this. Jake Gyllenhaal helped convince Jamie Lee Curtis to reprise, reprise her role of Laurie Strode for the film. Jake Gyllenhaal is a family friend of Curtis and is dubbed by her as her unofficial godson. Really? Like, have they ever done a movie together? How would they even... I, I know he's been in Hollywood, him and his sister, since they were, like, teenagers. But oh, yeah. I don't know if they've ever... He, he, I mean, I, again, no relation to this, but Jamie Lee Curtis was always the, like, what they call her, like, the queen of horror originally. But, like... Jake Gyllenhaal has been in quite a few creepy ass films. Yes, he has. And he does some, he does a good dark character. Underrated movie that people don't talk about are Nightcrawler. Have you ever seen that? I have not, but the concept is, fascinates me. He's basically like an ambulance he, chaser, right? 
yeah like paparazzi almost like mm-hmm. yeah like it's um yeah he, he just does a really good job of being uh mysterious and dark one thing i will give them credit for here they actually so we've done a halloween h2o movie commentary and i know people laugh at the title of that film <laughs> It's obviously not canon, but it, I think that is actually a really good horror movie. Have you ever seen that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so Josh Hartnett plays her son, who, of course, is not canon anymore to the story. But that one sort of shows Lori for the first time ever kind of trying to move on with her life to have, like, you know, adult romantic relationships. But this trauma still sticks with her. This one is sort of an interesting look because it's basically like she just says here, yeah, I'm twice divorced. I'm a basket case. And, of course, the guy tactfully brings up. They tried to take your fucking kids from you, say you're an unfit yeah. mother. So I think it is interesting, like, how the trauma has fucked her up, but also she's, like, using it, you know, in this latter stage of her yeah. life as sort of a moment of empowerment. It w- yeah, Absolutely, and it would have been... I mean, I did hope for it in this movie, and, and that's why I brought up Michael Myers talking in the last movie, and then Halloween Ends. I was thinking this was going to set up for a almost, like, Clarice Hannibal Lecter situation where she did decide to go see him in prison and like that would be so intriguing to me yeah like if there was a a situation where michael myers literally could not physically do something to her but they were face to face like what would be what would they almost have like i would love to see that it's like a federer nadal like i respect you i'm sorry are we supposed to believe that this guy uh is married to or at one point got to fuck judy greer yeah like no. Don't you love Hunter Holly? I mean, it is you know who does it the best is the show Seinfeld. Like George gets with the like hottest, hottest chicks in New York. <laughs> and then Elaine, like Julie Louise Dreyfus is so fucking hot. And she is always with She's getting like losers. Yeah. Like losers. I was like, dude, I love that that like men write it like this because that's always what they want. <laughs> so Andy Matichak on screen now, um, who was cast as Allison in this movie. Let me pull back up the horns fun fact because the people who wanted this role, it actually became very, very coveted. Um, so the role of at this, according to IMDb, the role of Alice and Laurie's granddaughter became a somewhat coveted role. Multiple popular actresses, including Lucy Hale and Emma Roberts, met with Danny McBride to personally talk about the movie. However, I the, can see Emma Roberts. That's interesting. I, and you know, what's funny. I actually would prefer Lucy Hale, Robin Sherbot's yeah. sister. But yeah, they both would work. Met with Danny McBride to talk about the role. However, the studio decided that they wanted to go back to the roots of the first movie and cast an unknown actress similar to how Jamie Lee Curtis was cast. Mm, that's cool. Which it's kind of weird because Andy Matichak, she, maybe she just has like one of those faces. Like, I feel like I've seen her in something, but obviously like. I think of- the only reason I said Emma Roberts is because they, they don't look that. They're not saying they look alike, but I see. But she looks like look. Judy Greer's daughter. I could see it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you're. If you're listening to this commentary, you're one of two things. You've either, of course, seen Halloween, or you haven't, and you're a sick fuck. And you or just... you accidentally found this channel, can't find your way off, can't... <laughs> yes. Oh my god, my it, computer froze, and the You've been audio tied up by a home invader, and he played the bro four squad podcast as you this is his form of torture he's a sick you're, yeah you're you're a terrorist at guantamo and this is all <laughs> they're playing on repeat yeah next up is a WNBA regular season game but uh we were talking about like directions they could have taken this and if you remember right and i remember i don't know if this was meant to be an ambiguous ending or if i just like totally misread it but at the end of this movie when they're in the truck driving away from her house on fire Allison like picks up a knife, I believe, in the truck, and there's like a very, the shot sort of lingers on her hand and the Linger. knife, and I'm <laughs> lingers, and I remember Geiger and I speculated that she was like making the sadistic turn to become a serial killer, that it was almost. I, like, I felt that, yeah, I do recall that. It'll be interesting to see it again. But if I correct me if I'm wrong, in Halloween Kills, that's either not touched on at all, or they like pretty quickly sniff it out. I people. don't believe it. It was touched on at all. That that movie okay like again maybe I need to revisit it but it's only been a year. That movie just didn't have substance. Like as a slasher, it was fine. I mean, it had everything that you want out of a slasher, but there was no story plot to well, it. Well, I think it felt, and even for like a, the low bar that you have plot as a horror movie, I think for us it felt like. Uh, first off, this guy was in You, if you remember. Oh, that's right. Last season, um, and of course, Halloween Kills. I actually love him in Halloween Kills. Mm-hmm. But I think for us, the second movie really felt like they had a three-movie arc and trying to stretch 
that middle portion of it into a full film was a little bit difficult. Yeah. I mean, I don't blame them. They're going to get the money, but yeah, it's like, just let's get to the, let's get to what we're here for. Um, but yeah, that was, that was my only thing here, but like, maybe they'll build her up, you know, again, what is Hollywood going to do? Are they going to end it, end it? Are they going to maybe Michael Myers story ends and they make her seem suspicious? The problem is it's like a self-defeating prophecy. You're like, well, we're going to end it. And then people are like, okay, cool. That's really interesting. Let's all go see it in theaters. And then you're like, well, it made a lot of money. We're going to keep it going. You're like, we went to go see it because you said it was ending. <laughs> but you say that, but you and I are <laughs> guilty of like I know, I know. every single time. We're the worst when it comes to that. With we're Saw, like, definitely. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, I do like my stories to have their beginnings, minute, middle, and ending. Like, like, but we're here to be entertained. Yeah. You know, like I will, I will always fight people in the genre, whether it's horror, whether it's sci-fi or, or superhero, whatever. Like people take themselves too seriously. I get it. I take my movie seriously, but like at the end of the day, did it entertain you? And if you were entertained, someone who I mean, you could probably someone on this podcast who does listen is calling me a hypocrite right now. Very fair for Very my fair. like criticisms of like Star Wars, but you know, I'm just saying, did it entertain me? I I draw that line. Yeah, we're always like, all right, I'll go see the next one, but my arms are gonna be crossed. <laughs> I won't like it. I'll pay the money. You're like, okay. <laughs> all right, two things like, about high school. Number one, earlier she was making out with her boyfriend. I maybe so, there's one couple I can remember in high school that would like kiss in the hallways. I think you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but was that was yeah, that like a I thing? Because it's like happens in movies all the time. I don't ever. No one at our school had the balls to like make out with their girlfriend. I mean, there was definitely like PDA, PDA, but it was never like blatant like hooking up. It was always like someone was holding hands and yeah, I yelled at. And also, how come in every high school movie it's always football practice happening? <laughs> <laughs> football is the shortest season of all sports. <laughs> right, but I feel like they're out here five hours a day. Every time in any high school movie you walk outside, it's in the middle. Like people are just having a conversation, staring at football practice. <laughs> <laughs> and I always love that because I know it was different where we went to high school, but like no one was allowed near those practices. <laughs> like you couldn't really just go hang out. Yeah, no one, you were, especially like some girl skipping class and her grandma. <laughs> like, like I remember we would go over to the stadium and we'd get in trouble. We'd freak out. I wonder where she gets the mannequins from. Mannequin saw us. You don't go there. Amazon, you can buy used mannequins with bullet holes in them. <laughs> I, I just have to feel I do appreciate what the storyline, what they what they do with her here. But like at the same time, it's been, what, 40 years in this arc now? Um, yeah, when was the first one? 72? 79, 78? I mean, is that the like, I mean, is that what they say? Right. Like, yeah. I mean, it's so been long enough that her daughter is probably 34, 35. Yeah, I mean, so how it's been 40 years. I mean, there is a line that I definitely understand her her uh, family's reaction. It's like, dude, that was 40 years ago. Like, there is a life to live. Yeah, it's like I, we're not denying any of the trauma you face, but like at a certain point, we have to be like this. You, if you're gonna keep living your life, like you have to keep, you know, you have to move on. Yeah, did she or, ever get therapy or anything? I'm sure they. So. Another thing that's interesting, speaking of therapy, is canonically, like, all the different fates they've had for Loomis. Yeah. Like, I think in H2O, they actually show him get murdered. Like, they don't show yeah, his face. too long. But I think Michael Myers, like, goes to his house and kills him. Because it's been too long. I don't a big remember. part of that movie is Laurie Strode is in witness protection, and they, like, faked her death in a car accident. Was that H2O? Was that H2O? Well, maybe okay. the car accident was in another movie, but in this one they either retcon it or just use it as a plot. Yeah, device. that's right. They retcon it in this one, in H2O. Sorry. I remember that. I do remember that part. Okay. Hey, nothing wrong with this, bro. You and I do this to pregame for all sorts of different events. We're, normally we're not shaking as much as she is, but... Again, I hate to be that guy. But like if someone like Michael Myers, just don't ever transfer him. You just gotta fucking yeah, leave. Why, him. Where is he going? Is where it that important to, to get him to like a new facility? Yeah, we. I, I just don't even. It, she so she's aware that he's being transported, and that's why she went to make yeah, sure. I think so. That's why she's there to follow the bus. And I don't remember exactly what happens here, but 
again, if you're Danny McBride and uh, David Gordon Green, you're like, all right, we got to do whatever the fuck we can to make this part seem plausible. Because if I'm an audience member, this is where I'm like, oh, yeah, really? I wish they had had her like just standing outside and waving. Like, hi. <laughs> He's like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. What is this like, like a should... TGI Fridays here? Honestly, like, and that's the whole thing with her being empowered is she's still frightened. I want her to like have that. I mean, she does later on, but like that ownership of like, hey, you fucked with me all my life, but I have survived you. Right. Yeah, that's true. At a certain point, it's like she wants to show him, like, no, I'm fucking good, bro. Yeah. Again, I cannot buy these people as a couple. He's like a haggard old man, and Judy Greer is like an eight. She's a Scranton nine, but Scranton in nine. she'd be like a six. <laughs> okay, Ryan. <laughs> I, I can I hear remember, you. Man, do you remember what it was like going on like a date in high school, but like having to meet your parents or your one, like your mom or your dad? Like Jesus, I remember those. I days. just remember, understandably, a lot of people just avoid that as much as you can because also God. with your parents. Then, like when you, like in high school, when you break up with someone you've been quote unquote dating for like three weeks, like it's not. You're not going to make an announcement to your family. So if your parents are like, hey, where's so-and-so? You're like, it's just, it's fucking high school, man. Like, don't get attached to anyone, okay? Yeah, I wish, uh, I'm sure people did tell us that. But, you know, when you're in high school, back when I was your age, you're like, okay, mom. Well, we can verify you have the ability, Cycle, to end relationships simply by tossing a snowball into the Swiss Alps. Well, that is true. Look, that's my biggest regret. I he would have been make- happy. Tooming relationship. I guarantee you he still fucking lays awake in bed like that motherfucker. I know he does because his wife sucks. <laughs> yeah, I like this. Just chug that wine. Mm-hmm. I thought you quit drinking. Who told you that? <laughs> Seth? Yeah, wait a sec. Quit drinking on Saturdays, but not today. Nobody wants Bruce Banner, bro. We want to see the <laughs> Hulk. <laughs> Hulk. 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 What? He has like a bottle of tequila. <laughs> yeah, if my grandma was like this, and I mean, I appreciate her trauma, I'd be like, oh, this is. Uh... Look, this is a TGI Fridays, Grandma. <laughs> Look, who hasn't cried at a, at TGI, a TGI Fridays? Yeah. You ended for... the two for 20? <laughs> what those multiple reasons to cry at a TGI Once you realize. When the... was the last time you were at a TGI Fridays? Jesus, probably the one in our hometown near your parents' house, which is doesn't probably, exist anymore. I was gonna say it's probably been closed down for a while. <laughs> when did that close down? Got to be five years at least. Yeah. So and it was probably another five years at least till I went there. I I think my only time was at that same one, and my my mother had a gift card, and I would never forget. So it had to be at least 10, 15, 10 12 years ago, and she is got it- two. I was going to say, TJ Friday is one of those restaurants where the gift card you get has like six different restaurants listed on it. Of course. (laughs) And my mom had two margaritas. And I remember dying laughing because she looks at me and she goes, oh, I see why you like to drink. This is is fun. That is the most cycling mom thing. (laughs) I was like, you're probably like, get another one, mom. I was like, yeah, damn straight. I was like, keep drinking. This is hilarious. My mom's getting lit at a TGI Friday. Your mom has one of my favorite quotes of all time. She goes, why don't you just get drunk without getting drunk? Just act act drunk. I'm like, mom, that's not how it it works. It makes sense, but it doesn't, you know? And then my favorite, sorry to, we'll get back to the movie, but when I graduated law school and remember everyone, my mom pledged to take shots of tequila and my dad had that bottle of tequila from like 1980 from Mexico City. Wow. And we all take it and we're all like, and my mom takes it and she literally goes, what? I don't get it. Like she had no reaction at all. Like she like the Michael Jordan shrug. Absolute beast mode. Yeah. (laughs) What the hell? We were all like, oh, God. Ice water coursing through her veins. Like that woman. So this is interesting. Like uh, what's her, what's Karen, Judy Greer's actual character's name? It's not showing up for me, but talking about how like, yeah, my whole child, the part of the reason I hate this bullshit with Michael Myers is because I was forced to basically live like uh, the fucking hunger games. As a yeah. kid. And that's probably why she married so and so uh, below her. Yeah. You know, ability. she lacks self confidence. Her, her character's name is Karen, which I don't love. Of course it is. <clears throat> so this is oh, just. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's going to be like dad who is mess fucking with the XM radio. And so he. So that's what happens. 
Also, this dad seems very old. Yeah, a lot of... Uh... Oh, what the... See, so... Do they explain how the bus wrecked? No, I don't. I don't think. Not that I remember. We're just supposed to assume they. His, his name is Lumpy. Why would you get out of the car again? Never get out of the car. That is his dad, allegedly. One of it's like a David his, Lerman situation. I was gonna say his dad is fucking sixty years old. Good job, man. He's the kid is eight. This kid looks like someone. Can't pinpoint it though. He do, he does look familiar. <clears throat> Maybe but a yeah. uh, who's the fucking kid that played Anakin? Jake Lloyd. Dude, I was thinking Anakin. <clears throat> Getting some Jake Lloyd vibes. Yes. Hopefully he won't be in prison in ten years. <sighs> Rest in peace, Jake Lloyd. One of these prisoners is like, I called an Uber. It'll be here in seven minutes, but we can only fit three inmates because I. It's also a surcharge right now. Of course, they always get you on Friday nights. <laughs> it's a busy night. Devin's like, did you check Lyft? Because oftentimes they're cheaper. Yeah, I know that, Devin. I don't have a Lyft account. It's hard to hold the gun, though, bro. So what was the dad's plan leaving the gun? All right, let me get out of the car. You stay here. <laughs> With the gun, because you're a But child. he also is, like, sort of solution-oriented, because he's like, you call the police. Like, okay, so do we want to fix this or not? Because what are you going to do? Until the cops get here. I hope this, what if this story was really how this kid is sick and just starts shooting everyone? His uh, sweatpants make him look like a like Ukrainian uh, like <laughs> Lisha, where they always have like the Adidas. Or oh yeah. Very well so, lit on the side of this highway. So that's the driver, right? I'll go get my dad. Don't do that. Yeah, what's your how? I'll that's what a predator would tell you. Dude. That's, I would be suspicious of that guy. At least they put the flashers on on the bus. You don't want an accident. <laughs> yeah, I would. He is even with a gun. If I was this kid's age, I was so I was not about this life. No. What? <laughs> He's like, what did I fucking say? That's the only. <laughs> was that yes. Columbo? Yes, he randomly showed up. <clears throat> Columbo was going to solve the case, and then he got shot by a little kid. I don't feel safe with this kid on the road. I feel more safe with the inmates. Oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, I guess he's not above killing kids. See, like, there got to be one level of sympathy. Like, if you're the podcast, you would have to do one thing to make Michael Myers seem sympathetic. I've listened to enough true crime that you right. always, at one moment, you're like, are they siding with the serial killer? Are they, like, yeah, he killed 20 people, but he was bullied for a day. You're like, oh, man. Oh, shit. Well... And the people he killed, they were all whores. Like, I didn't know. I forgot this guy was in the first one because obviously he has a huge yes. role in Halloween Kills. He has a, that that is one thing I did respect about Halloween Kills. It does kind of like the original Halloween Two, like just kind of like really take place immediately after. I gotta say, hearing that the third one is actually gonna fast forward a few years, I was kind of disappointed because I was like, dude, it would be so cool to have a trilogy all Wait, taking place really? in night. Yeah. I thought it was going to be the finish of the night. I know, I did too. What, so what does Michael Myers do for a few years? That's that's kind of what I'm a little bit disappointed about. But yeah, I've read Where that multiple go? places. Yeah. Especially knowing like what, just in case someone hasn't seen it, knowing what happens like the very last scene of Kills. Yeah, that makes no what sense. What a cool... So like get into QAnon and like storms the Capitol and like just like he has this whole yeah. separate life for he a while. He was part of that group. He, he uh, goes on the dark web and that's a little gruesome. That's disappointing. I did not know that. Um, yeah, I read that like six months ago. A bit that makes no sense to me. He's like, stay with me. I'm like, he's like, where, I, I just got shot. Where would I go? Did he dude? escape? Well, the bus is crashed and there's no one in it. Like, and but hey, but don't leave. I'm I'm literally on the ground. Where am I going? Tell me how I would leave. Oh, so that wasn't even Halloween. 
from the movie. I don't Lion know why Wars. I thought this all take, took place like in one night again, but I guess he escaped a few days later. So I do love, I live at a place now that uh, has a very Halloween-y vibes. Like every house decorates. Um, Good. My, in the city I lived in that you and I grew up in, it was never like that. But here, everyone, every single house is decked out for Halloween. I love it. Yeah, we put some of our decorations out yesterday, and then we're going to put the rest out tomorrow. Hell yeah. I think our neighborhood gets pretty into it, too, which is cool. It's way more fun. Absolutely. Yeah, boobs. Was this his mom or his older sister? sister? Okay. Yeah. Which, which, the only thing I get is like... um, in the original story as how Lori was his sister. Yeah, she was but the one in the crib, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, there was another fun fact I had about that. Him him killing his mom. I'm trying to find it here. But who knows what the, you know, if things are retconned. Oh, I don't know if this has come up yet, but this kind of ties into the scene we just saw. On the TV at some point in this movie, a newscaster can be heard describing the events of the original film <clears throat> as <clears throat> the babysitter murders. And this was originally the title John Carpenter wanted for Halloween 1978. It was only changed to Halloween after producer Erwin Yablins thought up the idea and to release it near Halloween. Mm-hmm. Actually, I knew that. The babysitter murders, assumedly because that's what Laurie yeah, Strode that's- was. Mm-hmm. But were her friends babysitting? Oh, here we go. Ba- they said they were all baby. Yeah, that was a good timing for that, dude. Yeah. Um. No, they were. They were all babysitting. Remember, they were like, let's all like. She calls him. She's like, hey, can you watch the girl I'm babysitting for a while? So I can go fine. fuck my boyfriend. Yeah. Yeah. But that that's what's so interesting about why the original Halloween, and I think we talked about this originally, like was so impactful in the genre because it started everything. Like, there were horror movies, like Hitchcock and that, you know, I get it. But in this type that we got, like, where it had sequels and spinoffs, we got Freddy Krueger, we got Jason, we got Ghostface. I mean, Wes Craven mainly is the reason for this. But, like, John Carpenter doing what he did here, I mean, just changed the game. And how, like, the, for Halloween, for sorry, for movie studios not even to realize that Halloween was marketable like this. Yeah. And it took one guy to be like, hey, let's name it Halloween and release it at Halloween. Well, and I think, like, you and I have such an appreciation for, like, the simplest ideas with horror movies. Like, we love elevated horror as well, but something so simple of, like, a simple home invasion or a dude just going down the block, house to house, terrorizing people. Like, it doesn't have to be this crazy. And that's when these things sort of collapse in on themselves as franchises, like Saw, case in point. Makes the first one so great. It's two dudes who wake up in a bathroom, like wondering what the fuck happened. Yep. When we start getting in all the timeline craziness and like seven apprentices and all that shit, like it sort of yeah. collapses in on itself. But it's the simplest ideas that I think of them because they're just visceral. Like, no crazy concept here. It's just a situation that would scare the shit out of you. Well, and, and, and again, yeah. that goes back to the earlier part with like, we don't, you can argue we still don't know what Michael Myers is, but especially when it started. He's just a person. He's just a, you know, deranged human being. But well, we don't then... mind about entering the women's restroom. This might be the most fucked up thing he's ever done. God. Let me guess. Well, he's not wash his hands. I do. I did respect this. I did respect that they took the spoilers, the podcast people out early. Yeah. Was this the scene where he like drops the teeth on the floor? Or is that the next when he goes to the guy? Mm, I don't remember. One of the rare times Michael kills during the day, right? Maybe I think so. Kill. So, I mean, have we talked about this? Like, what is Michael Myers to you? We, we, we last year, if you are so inclined, neuro horror head, go listen to our Halloween movie, or sorry, horror uh, killer madness tournament, where it wasn't just we're pinning killers against killers. What was so fun about that was it was the venue of right, where, where these the killers were fighting. Because Michael Myers, I mean, is arguably unbeatable. The most capable, yeah. When you change, yeah. So what is Michael Myers to you? Is he human? <sighs> I mean, I guess right now, like, 
theoretically the only thing, and this not the, not to minimize this necessarily, but like the only thing we have working against. Oh my god, just yeah. thinking he's a human is is Bad his job. like ability to withstand pain. Mm-hmm. Do you think he's almost like uh, if you have seen the movie Kick Ass, where his superpower is just that his like nerve endings don't work properly, so he's basically like doesn't feel pain when he's in fights. Maybe I mean, that's... it could be a combination of not feeling pain, not feeling emotion. I think he doesn't feel anything, right? He's just numb entirely, physically. But he has to feel something. There, like, there has to be a drive to, yeah, I guess to right. the satisfaction of like, killing people. It's just simple bloodlust because some of it does seem much more calculated. Like he targets specific people. Clearly, he's like obsessed with Lori. There's the teeth. That could be... He's just showing off, really. It's because they have the mask. But have we ever, like, I guess, not in this canon timeline, right, established, like, what his obsession with Laurie Strode is? Is it just that she survived him? And maybe I think she's, so. I mean, she's literally the one that got away? Except for, except for, again, the concept that they're related, and he goes home multiple times. There is something about Michael Myers being in his childhood home that is not humanizing to him but that calms him down that like just like that's where he's meant to be yeah and if Lori is a he's like jordan at the garden you know yeah if Lori is a relative then that's his obsession with her now if they go back to that well in ends do you think people be like do you think they'll even try that because it's been done before i don't think i i I don't if they're gonna do that they might as well just kept halloween 2 canon to my knowledge there's nothing in that that happens where it's like they could have just had jeff josh hartnett play the husband and like as the son instead and have the same daughter character like theoretically i'm just saying like you don't need to retcon so much i would imagine the only reason they and and we kind of talked about this at the top this guy's fine but yeah he hit michael with a crowbar and it didn't even fucking phase him i would imagine though the pitch to get like someone to want to take a crack at this script or these three movies is hey we're not going to behold you to any movies in the filmography so whatever 100%. you want to use you can use whatever you don't want to use you don't have to i'm just saying josh hartnett has nothing else going on he would have answered the call he's very busy okay <laughs> for a guy who was like the it guy from like 2000 to 2002 like i mean just like really didn't make he it. just i, I like the guy but he just has no charisma yeah this is like Awesome. When fucking uh, Freddie Mercury just picks up the mic again, you know. I would have loved it if like he starts like dancing. He's like, "Oh yeah, man." Air guitar. <laughs> I'm back, baby. He pulls out a finger guns, <laughs> like a fucking uh, CD sleeve, and he's like, "We're ready to play this mix on the in the road." And then he gets in the car. He's like, "We don't have CD players anymore." <laughs> Sorry, oh. you've been in jail for a long time, bud. <laughs> She's ready to go. Part of her wants this to happen. You can't upset the people like it's like the people who have um, bunkers waiting for like, you know, society to shut down. Yeah, they're wanting that to happen. They've done all if if they finish their life off all the money they spent Mm -hmm. and all the canned food they spent, they're going to feel so stupid. Well, the worst part is. My dad always jokes about this. Like in New in New York, you see people in the subway with signs like "The Apocalypse is Tomorrow," and my dad's always like, "I mean, the worst part is, what if they're right? There's no one to be like, told you so." Yeah. If the Earth ends, you're like, <laughs> yeah. Well, you can only lose. If you're wrong, you look like a fucking idiot the next day. If you're right, everyone d- is dead. So unless you know your sign does say "The Apocalypse is Tomorrow," and then you go tomorrow and you're like, "Hey, dude, the apocalypse didn't happen." You're, and the guy's like, "No, the apocalypse is tomorrow." The Joe's and Crab like, Shack. And so, then you come back yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Free beer tomorrow, dude. Like, This like, is one of the shake. worst decorated fridges I've ever seen. Like four random photos and a Domino's coupon. Clearly no friends. I was going to say, you're not getting invited to weddings or like no nope. baby showers. What's going on? Nope. Honestly, maybe that's the win. No baby showers, no weddings. It's true. Your schedule gets pretty filled up. Flights are expensive. I mean, you've been to, like, what, 18 weddings the last year? Well, my wife and I were talking about it. We think, uh, I think we're we're done. Like, I don't think we have Almost. anyone anyone else in either of our lives. Well, her brother. And right, oh, that's months. right, yeah, we got that last one. Oh, that guy! <laughs> oh, yeah. Again, 
it, I, I'm just, I hate to keep banging this drum, but like, how the fuck are they married? He looks like he would be more married to Laurie Strode than Karen. No, he, it is, she out, he outkicked his coverage. I mean, it's insane. They just think she's drunk. She's like, I'm not even that drunk. Maybe, maybe. I have a slight she buzz. She had like, you know, she dated a lot of cuter guys, but her mom kept driving those guys away. And this was yeah. the only guy she could lock down. This dude seems like a fucking weirdo. Where it's like, dude, I'm actually turned on by the fact that your mom was almost killed. She's like, well, that's weird. but That's the only guy she could get. This guy's Isn't like, the, well, he... I'm going to rule. I suspect foul play on this one. I just see a return of the uh, return of the oh my God. Uh, remember the Titans with him. He's great in Armageddon too. That's right. I would say he's like a and I wouldn't quite. I think it's a little bit of a disservice to call him a character actor because he does have a little more charisma than that, or a little more maybe range isn't the right word. He doesn't really have range, I guess. But. Yeah, I, <laughs> he just is very good at being a character who's dealing with the dilemma, but is not the main character. Like, right. But he is good. Like, he he has characters with arcs. Like, certainly his character in Remember the Titans has a pretty substantial character arc. One we all like to see. Oh, you're not racist anymore, or at least much well, less Well, once racist. he realized black people could help him win football games, he suddenly loved them. So, great, you know, which is great to see, you know? Gotta love that. Oh, you can do something for me in my benefit? Oh, I don't hate you anymore. All right, so this house, these jack-o'-lanterns, are we carving all those? Because if you've, at least me personally, carving a jack-o'-lantern is fucking difficult. Oh my gosh. It my is My wife wants so to do it every year, and I always am like, I love the idea of carving a pumpkin. But then you and get then 10 when it minutes into it, it, and you're like, just God. Like, Damn it. Like, I regret all of this. It's not Especially fun. And then, like, see... just cleaning out the innards immediately. Like, oh, Ugh. this is a chore. Like, this isn't fun. And, like, the precision it takes. Pumpkins are fucking thick, man. No, Those dude. little, like, mm -hmm. skinny carving things they give you. I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? Dude, they break. They break. You have to go use your actual knife. They, those good. carving kits are bullshit. My I wife she... literally two years ago did one... And she did the, you know, the meme that like this is fine, like the dog drinking yeah, the, coffee and everything. Oh, I on do fire. remember seeing this. That was incredible. It, it, yes, it ended up being incredible. It took her like seven hours. Yeah, it, she, it's, she regretted it halfway through, but she had made it too no, far. No, at that point, you're pot committed. If you want to do it at that point, Michael's like, you know what? The, smells like someone overcooked the snickerdoodles, so that's why this has to happen. So two things really quick and then kind of on par with what Michael Myers is doing here on Halloween night now. He does love to change weapons. Yeah, which got to get the clean kitchen. I mean, knife. he's a butcher knife guy through and through. So did you sense. know two Halloween? OK, so I just learned one. You know, I recently moved to Tennessee in the south and I've never heard of this. Have you ever heard of a cinnamon broom? Cinnamon what? Broom. Broom? They like put these brooms outside for Halloween. It's a southern tradition, okay. and it wards off like witches and spirits. Is there cinnamon on like the? Yeah, it just smells like cinnamon. So we're in a group text with the friends we've made here, and they're talking about these brooms. And my wife and I are sitting there being like, "Like I think they're the pastries." <laughs> yeah, I would. They're like, oh, I'm going to Publix and pick up some cinnamon brooms. We're like, oh, that sounds good. I'll have one. Yeah, because Publix is a grocery store. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm just like, that sounds tasty. Yeah, it turns out it's a very big superstition in the South about Halloween. And two, keeping your... This was the one I didn't realize because I watched Trick or Treat. Trick or Treat. Um, I need to watch that. So, and again, did you know you're supposed to keep your jack-o'-lantern, like, lit all night? No. And it wards off spirits. As long as it's lit, you won't be hurt. So do I need a jack-o'-lantern and a cinnamon broom, or is one sufficient? I don't know, man. Maybe if you're in the South, I'm not sure <laughs> the rules. The spirit, but it, but uh, I just appreciate those, like that kind of stuff because it follows Halloween rules. And mm, I do Michael like Myers clearly doesn't give He's, me Michael's shit. Michael's like, damn, I look good. I, oh, my gosh. So I did forget all about this scene. The people who had bought his house. Oh, this is his house? I, I think thought that so. was in the next one. Oh, shit. The gay is couple? It? Yeah, the gay couple. Is that the next one? That's the next one, yeah. Okay, okay. I'm pretty sure. 
they blur together, which is like kind of the point, right? It's like yeah, they, and that might be sorry if that's the case. That's the thing I liked from Halloween Kills. And I did one like of the guys the is Michael McDonald from Mad TV, right? I think so. Yeah, you're right. And it was like the concept of like, yeah, clearly someone would buy that house and be excited about like the story. I'm wondering, like, was did did she just leave her? Ooh, ooh, how do you even do that practically? That's awesome. Yeah, good for him. I love the uh, gender swap for Bonnie and Clyde. Genius mm-hmm. idea. And that right, then everything that happens this night to, to them take like um, impacts Halloween Kills. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these. I mean, now that I think about it, it's almost like they tried to stretch like the third act of one movie into a full other movie because for this one, like if you want to get people back into the franchise, it has to be. It has to feel like a full, not a, not necessarily a full narrative, but like you got to have a three act structure. Mm-hmm. So Halloween Kills is basically like just an extension of the third act. And that's, I think, why one of the flaws, it's not a bad movie by any stretch. No, but, no. But one of the flaws is that quote unquote evil dies tonight has to wear such a heavy burden of the narrative thread because they're like, dude, we don't have a full movie here. We need something else. And like, especially the second act when they're at the hospital. Like, what can we do to kill 35 minutes of the story? Yep. And as far as, like, ideas go, it's certainly not, like, I think it was a worthy attempt. It just didn't work for me. Super homage to the first one here. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I really like this. Like, having the babysitter situation. Um, But, yeah, like, like, I don't think Halloween Kills was bad. It had had some epic kills. Like, John Wick. Oh yeah, like when the, when he goes to that house in the beginning with the fucking LED light bulb. Yeah, that like, one is cool. That movie, in terms of if that's what you're going to see, which I look, eighty percent of these people, you and I talk about this with Saw. Most people aren't seeing the Saw movies for the reason you and I are. You know, like you and I enjoy the plot and the story and the like, the the meaning behind it. That was the thing. People are always like, oh, do you love the traps? I'm like, dude, honestly, you could take the traps out of Saw and I, it yeah. would not make a fucking difference to me. Where are the weirdos that we're looking at the like little layers in between? Um, and same with this. So I think that's why Halloween Kills. I think that's why you and I, I, I again, I don't think we thought it was a bad movie. We enjoyed it and the epic kills. I think the majority of people are like that. That's what I came to see. I paid I paid money to see Michael Myers just kill people in creative ways. Cycli, I'm sorry, I just got a text. I hate to interrupt you with bad news. No, no. Coolio just died. I know. I saw, I just saw that five minutes ago. Uh, I, I almost brought it up. I texted my I'm wife. I was like, I'm sorry, can you bring in just a little more whiskey for me? And she goes, I assume you want to pour one out for Coolio. Oh, no, so died. she already know, too. I, I was going to say my favorite thing about Coolio. One, Gangster's Paradise is one of the greatest songs of all time. 100%. 100%. The Monstars the theme song, song. He says, I'm 23 now. Well, I, the way things are going, I don't know if I'm going to see live to, live to see 24. Hey, he made it to what? 50, in his 50s. Good for him. So take that, world. Fucking damn it. That makes um, me sad. <clears throat> a, f- a friend of ours. I'll have to tell you his name off pod just because I don't think he has a, a podcast nickname. Um, just make one up right now. <laughs> um. Clake Juan Lay. <laughs> oh, I know exactly. Okay. Uh, so in college, his fraternity actually had um, hired Coolio to come and perform. And he showed up, but he got caught with cocaine like before he was going to perform. And so they had to cancel the show. I, I kind of love that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the most, that, to me, that's better than Coolio performing. Yeah, dude, that's honestly, what do you want out of Coolio? You just want Gangster's Paradise and him getting And the crazy. Monstars theme song, Hit Him High. The Monster, yeah. high hit Him High. No, him high. he had the Keenan and Kel song. Oh, Remember yeah. Would ha- now, if you're Coolio and you're performing in concert, you have to sing the Keenan and Kel song, right? Oh, God. So we're just turning this into a Coolio memoriam episode. <laughs> that's the only reason I didn't mention that. I was like, we're about to talk Coolio for a while. So did she catch him kissing another girl? Yeah, that's the whole thing. And that plays into the next one, right? In his defense, that girl was hot. 
which is always excusable when you cheat, right? Like, as long yeah. as you say, hey, babe. She's like, fuck, you know what? You're right. Was that pudding? What did he throw that into? But yeah, I remember, like, doesn't the opening, not the opening of Halloween Kills, but he is, like, still really trying to make amends for that. Yeah. If he's like that, she was hot. The Allison's like, I'm hot. He's like, damn it, that's actually. He's like, yeah, and I would cheat on her with you, babe. Babe, you mean that? Of course, I mean that. I would cheat on any girl with with you. you. (laughs) And then verse visa. Wait, what? (laughs) It's like that didn't make. What? What is the? (laughs) What logic do you think you're making? Look, if we can get over Coolio dying just for a few more. Fuck, we're going to, hey, this is our George <sighs> Blue game. We're going to have to play through it. And that's okay. That's what Coolio would want, you know? That's true. He would want us. He would to tell continue. us to continue. The show must go on. Michael Myers loves a good, uh, a clothes drying rack. Is there a better name? Clothes oh. line. There you go. I thought you were going to say like a good teenage babysitter. Like, but like, oh, yeah, like, that, yeah, that as well. So are, is this guy, is there at all a romantic relationship here? I thought this was like just the friend. I mean, he is also out kicking his coverage, the coverage if they're together. I actually forgot. He has coming up very soon. I'm assuming it is this movie. Again, I get one or two confused, which is sort of the point. He has a really gruesome death coming up on that fence post. Oh yeah. <clears throat> and how is how are these guys getting this girl? You know, like it must just be like a small town thing. Like there's just not that many dudes in the dating pool, so like naturally you get elevated. You know. Yeah, man. That's why you and I should have transferred to an A, like a one A school. Hundred percent. Although it's better if we didn't, and we can tell ourselves that it would have <laughs> right. really made a difference. We, we go over there, and there's like three girls, and they're it's all like, just Fuck. like, <laughs> like it's a lot of paperwork to transfer, you know. And we still don't make the football team. We're like, oh well, you know, this didn't work out at all. It's probably just Julian taking a dump. What? How would you know what that sounds like? <laughs> you haven't heard. I hate to be that guy, but this wallpaper is horrendous. See, I love it. And it's like horrendousness. Julian doesn't lie. I did remember really liking him. And I do like that because they do call um, Michael Myers the boogeyman in the yeah. original. I love how Julie, the kid like doesn't even give a shit that her boyfriend's over. He's like, yeah, what's up, Dave? There's a dude breathing outside <laughs> my door. Okay. You and I have talked about this. We've always agreed about this, right? Believe when the kid kids. says something like believe that, the kids. I believe them. Man, what did she I say? You saw, there's a man in my bedroom or in my closet. Yep. I learned that, and I've talked about this on pod. It's one of my top 100 movies, Clubhouse Detectives. Mm-hmm. Kid sees a murder in his neighbor's house, goes, tells his mom. His mom's like, shut up, go back to bed. And I'm like, and me and my sister used to watch that movie as kids and not understand why the adults never believed us. And now I'm an adult. I'm like, no, dude, I would believe my kid. I mean, especially if, like, you know your kid, like, all right, your friends aren't here. Like, what benefit do you have to making up a murder? Yeah. Like, it's not like, like, I saw murder. Like, all right, well, here's some ice cream. (laughs) That's what actually she does in the movie. She's like, she actually said the opposite. She's like, I shouldn't have given you ice cream tonight. She blamed it on the ice cream. How would eating ice cream lead to concocting a murder? Like, but as a kid, you hear a parent say that. You're like, that's what a parent would say. I'm like, now that I'm at that age, I'm like, dude, I would never say that. Every time you eat sugar, you make up murders. <laughs> murders. You might have, like, some weird diabetic issue if that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, he, you are right, though, about Michael Myers loving the clotheslines. He's also a, a total tool head. You know, like, this, Michael Myers would walk in a Lowe's and just peruse for God. Him. The employees, because th- they keep coming up, he'd be like, look, if I'm ready to buy something, I'll ask you a question. Okay. Dude, what if I figured it out? What if, like, Michael Myers is just pissed at the advancement of the dryer industry? Yeah. And the less, like, the, you don't need the clotheslines. Like, you need he to He had do. stock in a clothespin company that would just God. Like, wait, it's been downhill since. Like, motherfucker. His friend told him to buy into Kenmore and Sears, and he was like, those are never going to work. <laughs> 
he's like I, that's actually like how it all comes together every person he killed was someone who someone who gave him invested. bad investment advice yeah <laughs> I'm not even mad about that. I do have to say, like, as far as movies go, some kids' rooms are badass. I could never sleep with that aquarium light, though. No, I couldn't. The greatest kids' room I've ever seen in my life is the movie Hocus Pocus. That's a cool fucking scene, right? That and Arnold from Hey Arnold. I just We just watched Hocus Pocus last night to prepare for Ooh, the Ooh, are you ready for the... Yeah, I'm so pumped for the sequel. You were having a little watch party on Friday for it. Ooh. If you watch it, we should do a, like a review this weekend or something. Well, I was gonna say we're gonna watch it. I wonder if we can do one of those things where you guys hit play and we hit play at the same time, like a watch oh, that'd be party. Cool. Yeah, definitely. I've never done it, but I, it shouldn't be too hard. No, I'm pretty sure some of these apps have it. Like, I, I'm like, pretty sure Disney Plus does. I've seen it. I think. It's interesting with Michael Myers. So he was in the closet. But, like, are you trying to hide or not? Because, like, clearly he stuck his foot out to, like, keep the door from closing. Yeah, I don't know what his motivation is. Because he's like, I just want to kill everybody. But, well, until Halloween Kills comes around, he has he likes the one-on-one -on -one battles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is interesting, like, what drives him. Is he one of those people where he's getting, like, desensitized? But also, he probably hasn't killed at this point in a long time, right? Like, how long that's has he true. been in the institution? I think, I think that's what I struggle with, how I want this to end. You know, like, the question you brought up at the beginning. Do, do we want him, do we want to see his face? Do we want him to talk? I I'm think... assuming based, I mean, everything I've heard is this was a planned three-movie arc from the beginning. Mm -hmm. They were all through the script. So, if you're them, like, what do you pitch as, like, the end has to almost be what you start with. I wouldn't mind finding out what his motivation was. Yeah. Or, I mean, if he is just, you know, evil incarnate, then we don't need motivation. But like, I, would, though, I think him talking would be the one thing that would have me in the theater like, oh, that's yeah. cool. Are you going to see it in the theater or since it's coming to Peacock, it's just so convenient. You're like, fuck. I know. It does take away from the experience to watch it at home, I feel like. Yeah. Especially with horror movies, man. Like, that's why I want to, like, you've seen Barbarian, I haven't yet. I want to. I think you need to see movies. Barbarian I really. That's the thing is, like, when I have an ability to pause, get on my phone, it takes the, that's what the beauty of horror, that's why I love horror movies. Like, it, it, it just doesn't have the same impact when you watch it at home. Yeah. Now, I've never been someone who's found the Halloween franchise necessarily scary. I don't think you and I have ever found the Saw movie scary. Like, albeit maybe the first one had some really good jump scares with the pig mask. Yeah. Um, but that's not, you know, like, it still just takes away from it. Like, imagine, and this is maybe not the best example because I've told you repeatedly, this is the scariest I've ever been in a movie in my life with the strangers but imagine watching that like at home on your couch even if you have like the coolest home theater set up yeah though if you are in a remote area that movie might hit a little different that's a weird one that, that is, is a true. special case the wildest thing to me is that you somehow convinced banner to watch the second one which i still haven't <sighs> seen actually you should it, i liked it it's not it doesn't have the same impact but i really did like it had a really good scene in it. With the pool scene? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't check that out. Oh, that's creepy. Again, this kid's room is... Fuck and you brought the Hocus Pocus one. Three ninjas, they have a great room. Check out our movie commentary mm -hmm. on that. But this kid's is up there. And then you throw in the animal wallpaper. This is the dead chick, right? Yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, you're right. So I guess I'm a, that's the again the the beauty of it. I like that part. So she knows at this point that he has he's definitely free. Like she she she's not like thinking she might be crazy, right? Like it's been no. reported on the news. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, you're right about the house, like not the gay couple. Um <clears throat> Yeah, the movie's blurred to me. Did we see him kill the boyfriend, or was that done off-screen? Mm, I guess it was done off-screen. Wait, that's not the... Who's the guy that gets killed on the fence post? 
That's in this movie. It has to be. Right? Where he's with Allison and they like barely get away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now in the second one, it's it's of course revealed when they're both in the hospital. All right, skip ahead 30 seconds if you haven't seen Halloween Kills. Slight spoilers. <laughs> but that Lori and Frank, uh, I don't know if they were married, because she does say she's divorced twice, but they definitely had a romantic relationship. That was yeah. more than just like a hit it and quit it situation. So we we definitely get the most kills in Halloween Kills, right? Like we what our list is we're up to like nine right now. Well, I guess if you count, I won't reveal what happens, but there's a scene at the end where like multiple people attack Michael at the same time, and he. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. If you count that. That has to be because he's never really had a scene to my knowledge. I haven't seen all of them, obviously, but he's not had a scene like that in a movie. No, no, he has not. This guy filling the Loomis role. Loomis was a different cut from a different cloth from like your standard psychiatrist, because I don't want to say he like. Empathized with Michael, but he almost had like a weird like respect. for. He understood. He was the only one who understood him. Fun fact, I mean, I think you and I have mentioned this before on the pod. The actor who played Loomis was beyond an alcoholic really? on set. Oh, yeah. I no, need some like, stories. What? Yeah. Like, he he would, like, he was just notoriously drunk the whole movie. Like, there were scenes, and there's, like, people say you can go back and rewatch specific scenes and just really be able to tell that he was fucked Really? Up. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> like, I guess he wasn't. He was already had a problem, but also like didn't just understand the movie, didn't understand the genre. Because again, you go back to this. There's a, there's a Netflix. Um, Netflix has like the, the movies that films that made us or whatever. Films, yeah, they have a thirty minute one on this. Yeah, I I saw like the Michael Myers mask is like the lead graphic, like or like mm-hmm. the tile on Netflix. But I haven't. Oddly enough, I haven't watched any of those, and they've done Back to the Future, which you know. Yeah, I know that's one of your. Yeah. They've done Halloween. They did another movie that I really liked. Did they it's, do like Hook or something from the 90s? Well, it's just like the the Halloween mask itself was what is, oh my gosh, I used I know this. Oh, William Shatner mask, right? Yes, yeah. Michael Myers is mask is. is uh um they talk about the how low but like no one had any expectations. They released no. Halloween into like 10 movie theaters like and then oh, no and then one knew who it. Jamie Lee Curtis was, no. obviously. Like it's insane what the, like I, on, honestly you can argue that if Halloween wasn't made, we don't have some of the like movies we love. Oh no, I want to get back to that in just a second. Sorry, I got confused. This is the guy I was thinking of. The friend right. who came over to hook up with the blonde chick is a character either we haven't seen previously or was just like briefly touched on. This guy is their friend. This is the dude I was mm-hmm. thinking. Of. That's right. But yeah, you're right. I mean, like you go watch Halloween. If you watch like the 1978 Halloween right now, you're like. I mean, there's so many cliches, and you're like, no, dude, this made no. them cliches. This was the f- there was no cliche. They first were. one to the wall. I think people like what had the Exorcist come out before that? Probably, maybe the Omen. The Omen, Omen was actually like early said, '80s, right? You had you had horror. Like I said, you had all the Hitchcocks, the Psycho. Like was Carrie weren't... out yet? Maybe Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, but those were again. They they weren't. They were just entity type things. And like Michael Myers was a human slasher killer. Like, I mean, again, the, the whole what Michael Myers has become since then. Um, and then the fact that they were able to do spin offs off of it and yeah. sequels. I mean, there's there wasn't any of that. Like the Omen definitely got a second one. The, the Omen, I actually pretty sure had three. Yeah. The kid is like an adult in the third one, right? Yeah. But I think that was actually solid pretty- 80s. Yeah, I think you're right. But yeah, this was like, and again, simplicity, right? Like, before I feel like horror, the genre felt like, well, if we want to get people in the theater, there has to be some really sort of elevated concept here, like supernatural mm-hmm. or satanic, or it's like a cult. Mm-hmm. Halloween, again, ghost. the balls to just be like, no, man, it's a dude who's angry and has a mask on, and it takes place almost in real time. And he's just going house to house killing people. 
Is that Anthony Michael Hall? I don't know he's in the first. Obviously, he's a huge character in the second. I think I looked a lot like him. Maybe I missed it. I doubt it's him. I thought they would show him for just a second. Plus, his character in the second one isn't a cop, right? He's just like a dude. He he was the yeah. little kid that she babysat, right? Yeah, that's right. I was like going to say, I don't think he was a cop. So she, her boyfriend, do we see him again in this movie? I know he's a big role in the second one. I don't know if we see him. Yeah, he's definitely in the second one. I don't, I don't remember this film enough. I'm pretty sure I haven't seen it until it came out originally. That's how you want to do this, bro? So I'm pretty sure I saw Halloween 2018, or do you want to call it Halloween Returns, or in theaters, obviously, that was pre-COVID, right? Yeah. 20, yeah. Uh, God, time is dead to me. Um, and then Halloween Kills last year. So that was exclusively streaming on Peacock. Right, like I did it. I don't even know why. Um, yeah, I yet. think it was. I don't think I. I don't think I saw that one in theaters. I don't, I no. don't know if I saw this one in theaters either. But yeah, I would like to see the third one in theaters. But again, if you're gonna put it on Peacock, I pay my five bucks a month. Like, yeah, I will say I did last year watching on Peacock because of what we talked about, and I'm sure people feel the same way who are listening. I I like I'm like no. We're putting our phones down. We're turning off all the lights. Like, yeah. we're, if we go to the bathroom, fine, we can pause it. But, like, we're not going to go eat and do other things while we're doing this. He's like, sorry, Mr. Elrod, just me again. No, I didn't piss my pants this time. That was once. Okay, I did, though. But, like, okay, I did, but it, a little. Totally different circumstance. It was just, I just had water all day, so it's it's not even that big of a deal. Which I actually be proud of me. I've been doing a really good job hiding <laughs> lately. They say it's, it's going to help me lose water weight, which seems ironic, but. <laughs> Dude, Michael Myers has like a fucking Las Vegas show. Like the lights are on, the lights are off. He's like across the yard now. He, he, he is theatrical. You got to respect it. He doesn't just kill for the sake of being efficient. He's like he's on like the roof with a drum set. It's like holy shit, what a show! Want to make people appreciate it? It's an art to him, right? Just killing a seventeen-year-old got kid doesn't give me the same joy it used to. I'm a showman. I'm sorry. God, God forbid a fog Ooh. machine would turn on right now. Plus, no one walks more efficiently than no, Michael absolutely. Myers. He gets more bang for his buck this way. If there was an Olympic walking competition. He would out walk, run Usain Bolt. It would be insane. Yeah, those guys. The key is that hip gyration, but mm -hmm. keeps himself flexible. Yeah, this I mean, kid he gets multiple ways. Let me get you in the it, yeah. back. Yeah, this is again like Randy Johnson with his fastball. And the thing is, like, he's not going to tear an ACL with the way he walks. You know, no, he's, he's not, not. going to sprain an ankle. He has good form. He is. Mm -hmm. I, I I would like to imagine like Michael Myers during the off season is in the mall with the old ladies. Just like power walking. First one in, last one out. Yeah, this is a gruesome kill. Jesus Christ. And now she starts to realize, like, that probably isn't an accident. Oh, you <laughs> might was be involved. Like, that. like, oh, no. He felt like Michael Myers, like, but, like, he clearly did not fall. Like, no, he fell. Oh, no. That's horrible. He fell, and Michael Myers just happened to be in the backyard. That's what we'll tell the cops. Like, I was like, like no, I if you don't give me, maybe that's his, like, weakness. Like, he needs the credit. He works off referrals, likely. Tell hey. your friends I killed that kid. <laughs> Being a consultant pays, you know? Can we just be real here? And again, there's no way. This is one of those, like, man, if I was in that fucking situation. If someone came to your door banging like this, saying, a man is murdering me, I would love to take open know, the man. door and let them in. I'd probably be like, bitch, you need to get out of here. <laughs> I don't just, I think the problem is we don't trust anybody anymore. Yeah, I don't either. Like, unless I know you, I don't trust you. And I'm just like, and that's the sad thing. You just read too many stories. You just don't, like. Well, and I, I, would say I would never spoil anything for in Barbarian for you or our listeners. But the way, the, the fun thing about that movie is as you go into it, like, you are trying to get out ahead of, ahead of the story. And you, every character, like, almost for, like, the entire first act and a half, every word, every character says, you're like, I don't believe you. 
See, I love that. You're full of shit. Yeah, because that's so, like, I love that realism. And then when you know, like, the ending, you're like, oh, okay, you can go back and sort of reanalyze everything in a different way. There's some, like, little eight-year-old, like, so we're done with the candy? Or, like, what's the situation with all that? Look, I don't want to be insensitive. May that's their the souls rest thing. in peace. <laughs> but that candy's going to go to waste. You bought the saying. candy. That's what I'm saying. You, you want to bring an open bag of Butterfinger Fun Size back to do, Walmart? Go get do we up. need two tragedies tonight? Let's just let's exactly. Just. Let's not get. This is what Michael Myers wants, guys. Guys, there are children in Africa. There are who Americans would love. Who feel like we are not afraid. <laughs> we will not trick or treat in fear. Like, what? Kid that got fucking like, killed by a fence post. <laughs> fence you got Wi Fi down here? Like, what's the situation? Because the game <laughs> is on. It's the third quarter. <laughs> I would love that. She's like, actually. Uh, <laughs> Now that I have you down here, I've been pickling my own beets. Give me an honest review, because I can't fix the brine if you don't tell me what needs improving. Look, as a beet fan, just give them to me raw, man. Don't pickle them. You are, to- you are a total beet head. Forgot about That's that. right. Listen to my podcast. Beats by... Can't beat me. this. <laughs> beats by... Actually, that'd be a good one, too. If we get something that rhymes with Dre. Yeah, I know. She's a crossbow. I definitely, I'll be like, yo, give me the crossbow. I'm like, I don't know how to shoot one, but give that to me. But it's the most badass. She's like, actually, I don't have any arrows. Well, then why fucking own it, Lori? <laughs> well, the second you shoot one and you have to reload it, you're like, I regret getting the crossbow. Yeah. Like, it is badass in nature. But Ugh, uh, why did I let you talk me out of this? <laughs> it I takes five you. minutes to reload? Jesus. And I need forearm strength? I was not prepared. You know, when I saw the movie, I don't think we've done a commentary on this, but this would be a great one. Small Soldiers. But one of the Gorgonites. Oh, yeah. Crossbow. That's the first time I really saw like a crossbow and was like, "Fuck, I need that." Love bow and arrow. Love a gun. See, just run him over, man. Hit him. There you go. Hit him. Now to slam on the brakes. That was a weird edit. Yeah, that was a really weird edit. Also, were they in a jeep? I thought they were in like a compact car a second ago. Yeah, and why? Are you, like, is he he's dead. It's, uh... Oh no, you killed him. Is oh wait, I forgot there's like a little twist right here. Yeah. Oh my, I forgot about this one. But wait, he doesn't Hawkins is good, right? He's in the They're both in the hospital laying next to each other, aren't they? Yeah, but this dude stabs him like thirty times. Dude, who hasn't? Been stabbed thirty times and been fine. I forgot about this completely. Mm-hmm. He's like a fucking fanboy, right? He's like, this is so going in my blog. <laughs> Mike Zanga. He's like Michael Myers is like, dude, no one is reading that anymore yeah it's like a 19 likes and a post that's three months old now i'm gonna have to watch kills again because does it just start with hawkins in the hospital or do they like flash back and show? yeah i'm pretty sure it does i'm pretty sure no remember it not to again i'm assuming you've watched this if you're listening but oh god um oh he put them out dude this guy's like a total yeah. fucking fanboy god. he's cost um, i'm pretty point. sure it te- like they leave the house and it's on fire and the fire department and the ambulance come get her that's right. Like and then, it, like, but then when she gets immediately. when she gets to the hospital, is Hawkins already there? I don't know if he's already there, but they definitely put each other next to each other, I think. But Yeah, I know they're I, I, yeah, you're right about that. Michael Myers has got to be like, dude, what the hell, man? This is a copyright infringement. I don't appreciate That's it. not even how I would do it. What if you I would to... never do that. Ugh, Honestly, it's look insulting. At you. Look at you. You're pathetic. With the cop jacket on in a sling, clean yourself up. So, oh man, was this guy... Fuck, I'm so bad at remembering the movie I've been watching. Was he the person at the psychiatric ward that, like, let them in? Yeah, it's, I think so. So do we think he kind of orchestrated all this? 
I mean, I think that's definitely why he wasn't bothered with the Michael Myers mask being like. Like, is that why the bus crashed? I don't know if they ever actually explained that. Yeah, that, I remember that being a problem. Like, they didn't. I mean, that would make sense. That it was like an inside job. Because they never show like a prisoner get loose and like. Right. Or, yeah, or someone pulls like a spike strip in front of the car. Look, they're talking about Bon Me, dude. I mean, I agree. Bon Me is so fucking good. I don't know what I've had. Is it Korean? Mm hmm. Okay. Or Vietnamese or whatever. But anyway, it's so good. I've always wanted to go on a, on a stakeout. Imagine the great conversations you could have. It's like one thing, like maybe you and I did it in high school, but we didn't appreciate it. Yeah. It's a good team. We should do a Bro Force Squad stakeout. Good, good team building exercise. <laughs> I definitely doubt. But he brought an entire container Ooh. up. All right, let's have this hot debate. Brownies with or without nuts? What's your no, preference? Without. All right, you're, you're you're wrong, but thank you for your... I know, I look, I love, I'm not saying I won't eat them with nuts. I'm not saying they're I don't want your bad. pity. I, I'm saying that... They're better brownies with Brownies inherently don't need nuts. They, I've never been like... Oh, I'm so glad this brownie has nuts. Like, I've never eaten a brownie without nuts. I've been like, I wish it had brown nuts. Put all like, the nuts in my mouth. Oh, my God. In or around? Salty? Or in no? The vicinity of my mouth area. <laughs> I'm surprised you're a nut brownie guy. I really am. Huge nut brownie guy. Mm. Yeah. The, you know, you and I have known each other for like 20 plus years and we're still learning about each other. Yeah, we are. It's great. As we mature, <laughs> our relationship matures, matures with us. Is he eating soup? Because as far as steakout foods go, that's like, come on, man. It's a terrible one. The one. No, you gotta have a pizza. You gotta well, you have can a tell, pizza for a steakout. You, you can tell the guy on the left, his wife was like, if I pack you a lunch, will you eat it? Yes, I'll eat. Okay, because if I pack it and you don't eat it, I'm gonna be pissed. Because the other guy got to like get takeout, and he's like, I can't do it. My wife fucking. Well, I would agree. And then on the next day, you wake up and you realize that they made soup, that she made soup, and you're like, I didn't want. Wait, he was in the car. I thought I just had the mask in there. Yeah, he just walked in there. What? From outside? Yeah. How? They drove like six miles. <laughs> They're all friends, man. Michael Myers really, man, it's like a what have you done for me lately business. Because that guy yeah. just basically got the cop from fucking killing him. And now he's like, you know what? I've already forgotten about that. <laughs> and he's like. It's like, hey, man, I appreciate it. Well, yeah, like, you're running away now, so that bothers me. I d what does he expect her to do? Does this guy, like, want to be killed by him, you think? Like, it would be, like, an yeah. honor? Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Now, let me ask you, is that humanly possible? I mean... Even with those I, boots? That... Yeah, it would take some extreme strength, and that guy's got to have, like, an eggshell skull. That's for sure. Now, you know, again, that goes back to the question, what is Michael Myers? And, again, that guy was old. Maybe he does have uh, fragile bones. So I guess, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, but I haven't, like, really started to think about what the question means until now. In Halloween Ends, do you need slash want some description of to like why, why is he able to do all these things or is it just like part of his mystique is like he just doesn't No, i think that's it's it goes back to what i said why i'm okay with not saying of jesus um not good he's not he's not okay he, walk it off Run, give him some space <laughs> Let, give him air i never understood the air thing give him air like the honestly, air isn't being constricted so yeah if i sit a little bit closer to him he can't breathe He's not. I remember well, as a kid getting hurt. Be like, give him air. I'm like, I don't. I never understood that one. But yeah, like, I, it goes back to the thing about like seeing their face. Like, does that that does an answer provide us? It's more so like that's why I think something satisfying to me would be like a one on one conversation. Like again, a la Hannibal Lecter, Clarice. Mm -hmm. Like, it would just be an epic. Like they're the antithesis of each other. And so just giving them that scene that everyone's begged for, not just her running away from him. Right. Not her fighting him. Let them be equals for just a minute. Like, that's what I want. 
And I guess, like, to take it a step further, is there anything you want him to say? Like, if you're Laurie Strode and you could ask him one thing, like, what would it be? Would it just be why? Okay, think about this. Strangers. Mm -hmm. All she says is, because you were home. Yeah. That's the only fucking line we get from them. How epic was that? Yeah. That was insane. I mean, that that's, I think, like, especially, like, looking back on the movie The Strangers, that's part of what induces the fear. Yeah. Is there is no so methodology what, to what it. What if she it's, says that? To, what, what if we get something like that, where she's like, to Michael Myers, like, what, like, why me? Why? Like, that's what I envision. Like, that kind of rapport between the characters who have some mutual respect. Like, whether he obviously wants to kill her. He yeah, what if he says, like, because you're, like, a word, it's, like, the most dangerous game. He's, like, you're, like, yeah. a, the adversary. Like, because you fought back or something like that. Or, like, I don't know. I, I think strangers never showed us their face because we wouldn't have gotten anything out of their face. Right. But by the one thing we got out of their voice, it was so powerful. That's kind of how I feel. Well, dude, the scene in the strangers, like when she knocks on the door and says, is Amanda home or whoever she asked for Tamara Tamara. That's like the scariest moment in the movie. Dude. That's why I don't want to open a door for someone that, that late in the night. Michael, this guy to Michael Myers is like a preseason game. He's like, dude, I don't even get, my rocks don't even get off from this. You're such a fucking pussy. Like, do you think it's a burden sometimes? Do you ever think he's like, I don't actually want to kill you, but you're in the way. Yeah, it's like if you're like a big band and you have a tour in one of your cities is like, I don't know, fucking Akron. And you're like, yeah, God damn it. All right, we we'll have to do, do it. it. I'm going to say thank you, Ohio, and not Akron, though. Yeah, because we got three shows here. When we go to Cleveland, though, I'll we'll mention them by name. Oh, yeah. You know, I understand Lori has been, you know, doomsday prepping, but, like, would it kill us to put up a fucking picture in this house or some decoration? Like, just some recognition that she had a family? Like, go straight I, for I, the... Oh, I thought there was, that was a matchbook. I was like, we're just going to go straight to burn the house down? Well, it's like, you know who she needs? Kevin McAllister right now. 100%. Some like, marbles or matchbox cars at the doorway here would do What? Kevin wonder. McAllister did that in a matter of hours? She's been waiting for Michael Myers for 40 years in this house. Yeah, let's throw the microwave uh, macaroni meal in and yeah. let's get ready to fucking game plan this She's thing. got the island secret doorway down to the basement. Like, okay, good. Respect for that. But like... All that fucking reinforcement and she just had the glass window there that he could... Yeah, like Kevin McAllister would never. This is a great trailer moment, though. Mm -hmm. Mom? You okay? Yeah, just being strangled by a serial killer. Be right down, hon. You can start the tea. God, imagine being picked up by your fucking head. Shoot his hand. It's just like... She's been so prepared for this moment and just. And those two fucking glass window panes. That's what gets yeah. you. They may have a code word too, like while the door is opening. So, like, because I would absolutely see that door open and start shooting. I would. I would be terrible. You have to. Again, sorry for making the like the team like reference to strangers. Why I love the scene where they accidentally shoot their friend. That's what I would do. I would absolutely so accidentally shoot my friend. Oh, 100%. I think that's what's so realistic about that. It's like when you're in that state of, like, you're just so yes. mechanic that you're not, your wits aren't about you. What's the point of the spotlights? I know she has a lot of cameras, but, like. Yeah, it's not like he's really scared of light, so. You know what? Maybe he's not a clutch player, and so the brighter the lights are, the worse he performs. Maybe that's what it is. That's true, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We've all seen Michael Myers' playoff numbers. and they... Game day is here. I'm not doing well. Did he lose the butcher knife? By lose, I mean, is it inside of someone that he killed? <laughs> <laughs> Which per he's like, like, yeah, just trace your steps. Is that, it's, dear, yeah. It's, it's like a kid at school that loses expect. a lunchbox. Lori's probably got some weird shit down here. Like, that has nothing to do with this. It's like hobbies that she's had. Like a half-fulfilled puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you didn't finish this? And all always, this time? I always assumed we'd have time. I am disappointed with her lack of booby traps. I'm just saying. Like, 
Do you think maybe this is crazy? In a weird way, do you think Lori wants him to kill her? Absolutely, because I feel like she knows that's how it has to end. It's yeah. it's like um, it's like Harry Harry Potter knew that it was always going to end with him and Voldemort. It's like when he learned the prophecy, like there was no satisfaction until right. it was they got their one on one battle. So yeah, like, you're on a collision course. So like yeah, trying to deny the inevitable. You can exactly. So I feel like she knows that. So like. Maybe that's why she doesn't have the the booby traps or whatever. Like, say like he's gonna kill me, and maybe maybe killing her is what gets him to stop. And then he can go become a, like a tax accountant or something. Yeah, I, I think he does have his CPA his certified. <laughs> he retires. He's like, look, I just want to move on with my life. Well, that bad news is you're not gonna get the deductions you thought you were gonna get coming in. And to me, that is murder because the way the IRS is. And the trust me, practice. do I know murder? <laughs> <laughs> that's our, that's our, remember how we used to do like, our, <laughs> like, in, uh, sp- our, uh, what would we do? Uh, not anthology movies. Spin off or like, holy story. Call. But yeah, like, he is a, he is a tax accountant. <laughs> What's the term I'm looking for for like a movie that's like, uh, not a spin off? I'm not, uh, yeah. God damn it. I don't know. It'll come to me. <laughs> I know what it's like to get. <laughs> Hi, get I'm Michael Myers. We've had a lot of laughs tonight, have we? <laughs> <laughs> no. Is and like Michael Myers room? being like a big fan of like animated Disney films. See, so she has some things. Okay. She just waited too long to get involved. Like, she could have done this hours ago. Uh, Google is not giving me, like, a good... What is this? Like, Try Bing. No, I'm good. <laughs> like, no, no. I'm, I, I will never do that. Yeah, this is like the mannequin graveyard that she has. You know, if you have, if you're like trying to decide between a couple different outfits, though, it is kind of nice to have this. That's true. Back. If there. you're gonna go out, go out. Look at them all yeah. on a full, you know, b- body. So Michael's plan is like, let me scare her. Then I'm going to go upstairs. I got to wash my hands. We're not fucking disgusting pigs over here. Well, he was always, you know, ready for COVID, even the years leading up to it. He's like, got to wash. He's wearing a mask before it was cool. Social distance. Anyone gets too close, he'll kill them. Did we just call them anthology movies? Is that what we call them? Yeah, maybe. Here's another word, but yeah, we need to get back to that. I, I always did like that. Yeah. I think we already came up with ours for this one. So, oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah, she has like a smirk on her face. She's like, fuck yeah, this is how it has to end. I mean, like, yeah, like, again, I do state, I do like believe that, though. I mean, as, as silly and sarcastic as we are. The people who prepare for these kind of things their whole life. There are these people who have like doomsday scenarios in our country. Well, I don't that... even think it's it's understating it, but like there is a huge part of her that's like, you know, if this ends up happening, it's re it's affirmation to me that I'm not crazy. Yeah. And the longer it goes on, then the more strained her family is from her. So now she feels vindicated in every single way. Right. She knows if they survive this, then her family will be like Oh, our bad. I mean, and there's no uh, world where, like, they all sit down again at Applebee's after this and have a laugh about it. But to her, she's like, well, at least I can sort of rationalize my behavior to They're myself. They're going to TGI Fridays, all right? Right. Well, that's where they have the gift card. What are we supposed the to do? Card. Not use the gift and card. And two margaritas. <laughs> I, I, re- I do remember the one thing I will make fun of the people who do complain about these movies as much as I've complained about Halloween Kills Michael Myers was always a theatrical killer. 
from oh, the yeah. original. That's not something they added into this. It's no, not like right. the the Friday the 13th franchise where Jason actually wasn't even in it until the second one. Like this he was theatrical in that first one. He used he used his kills and then would he would move the bodies. He gets banged for his buck for yeah. sure. So like <clears throat> I remember people being like, "Wow, why would he do it?" Like I just remember seeing things on Reddit or online and like no, that's Michael Myers, man. Like he he wants to intimidate well, you. Like that. he's like a true apex predator in the sense that like, and even here, like he's been out of the game for I don't know, least, what is it? Want to say forty years to the day? Um, to where he's like, dude, just like proving that I'm dominant and killing you does nothing for me. Mm-hmm. It's about like the the game that surrounds it, and that's I think why he loves Lori so much because she is a total fucking fighter. Yeah. I love He's this. like, you know, as far as babysitters go, Lori, you could charge 20 bucks an hour. And I mean that as a compliment. It's like, what? What is my pitch for that? He's like, well, <laughs> tell the parents that, like, I'm not easy to murder, number one. I'll play board games with your kid. I won't let them win. <laughs> that's that's not, a, that's not a fucking joke here. We need to teach them. Actual no, not at all. This is probably the best callback. Oh, yeah, to the OG. I didn't mm-hmm. even realize this. Yeah. And again, that's where, like, I could see... So, like, let's say you're a studio, and you brought up the Danny McBride point is what I think is so interesting. And Danny McBride is like, hey, are you? if you're making Halloween, I have an idea. I want to pitch it to you. And you're like, mm-hmm. all right, this could be interesting. You're like, like um, what? It's like, it's but, literally how Jordan Peele got the ability to do a Get Out. Like, yeah. it, was, it was at a party and made a comment. But, like, you, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so, you're like, you get in the room because we're like, all right, you have made great films before, albeit not in this genre. What do you got? And Danny McBride is probably in David Gordon Green, who's a very capable director. I think the most serious movie he did before this was Stronger with Jake Gyllenhaal, which is kind of an mm. interesting tie into this. But he probably pitches the idea and you're like, dude, you're a fucking fanboy. You get this franchise. You have the role. Yeah. You have the script. It's you. But that's like that's the thing. It's like it's how you again, weird to like this weird Jump, but like Jason Siegel doing the original Mupp- the Muppets in 2011. Oh yeah, it's a. It's uh, like it, if you're passionate about it, like dude, it'll it'll open some eyes. I think. He knocked it out of the park because he was a fan. He grew up with it. Like mm-hmm. it was incredible. It's like sometimes something you don't expect like that, like Danny McBride doing this, Jason Siegel doing Muppets or whatever. It's like those are the people who are going to bring out the best. Like. Banner and I have talked about this, like for Harry Potter, we're, you know, huge Harry Potter fans. We think, obviously, because Hollywood's going to do it, they're going to remake Harry Potter one day. Yeah. The thing in our world is the person who does it, just like Peter Jackson, who was a fan of Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. like we're going to get someone who was obsessed with it. Like we. Were, That's true. And, and do something more. Because everyone will pitch the story. Them, every director. So they'll want to be like, yeah. all right, but who actually has a passion for the source? Yeah. Material? Like Peter Jackson was obsessed with it like that's what made lord of the rings so epic like and the thing with halloween that i wonder is so david gordon green being the director and him and Danny mcbride are writing partners like they've mm-hmm. you know, they wrote eastbound and down together and everything else but knowing david gordon green had the feel for this to direct it because you can imagine like halloween like how this is probably a pretty short script right a lot of it just has to be done while you're mm-hmm. actually on set like, it's not very dialogue heavy, and no. I guess you can write some of the stage direction, but that's really done in person, you know? Oh, the thing about, like, a quiet place. Yeah, a great analogy. Yeah, like, I mean, that's what makes something, like, these horror films, the Halloween franchise especially, I mean, I mean, you don't need the dialogue to really carry it, like, which is where I think people can say, like, I'm wrong about Halloween Kills. But you don't need a lot of dialogue to carry a story. Sorry to interrupt. Were you thinking here at all that she might shoot Lori? Or are you like, no, that's not going to fucking happen. That wouldn't even make I, I thought about it for half a second, but yeah, there's no way that's how this would end. That was kind of cool as she acted like she couldn't do it. Yeah. Bro, I was fucking built for this. Oh, shit. First of all, she said happy Halloween, Michael. Like, Yeah, like, I'm sorry, say, but like, I see good tidings. God, like... And also on to you. Her like snapping out of it and being like, gotcha. It kind of reminded me of in Beer Fest when they act like they're drunk. 
<laughs> or not, not that, that drunk. drunk. It's like, not, fuck. Germany's I wasn't like, that stabbed. I yeah. It, I also forgot the Michael Myers like sit or like lean up from a laying position. That's kind of mm. like too. That's like his. He's a good core for his sixty. He's in his sixties or whatever old he is. You need to work both sides. Like planks get the other, and then the lean ups do the other one. See, I always like the human element, like that moment where he's clearly knocked down. Um, he still has just. But he gets up he's, again. There we go, yeah. Kevin McAllister. Yep, that is. Um, a great, were those swords? I don't know what those were, but like, that's why I always love Ghostface in, in Scream. Like the guy is falling over half the time. Like, yeah, that's still true. the kill, but he, it's still like. No championship team goes untested, you know? No, man. Sometimes you play K-State at home every two years and they fucking have your number yeah. every two years. It makes no <clears> sense, <throat> but you know what? It happens. That's definitely not a specific reference to anything. No, it's not. Now, I don't want to spoil kills, even though it's in, like, the trailer. But he kind of gets out of this because of the fire department, right? Yes. Yeah. Who are the fucking fire department saving lives? Like, honestly, it's kind of. Well, let's just say this. They responded way quicker than any law enforcement in this movie. Because if if the roles were reversed, if the fire department took forever, but law enforcement showed up quick, this guy would have been dead in Act 1. Oh, 100%. That's always how it is. I remember one time I was at an Oklahoma City Thunder game, and the halftime show was they had, like, a police department team playing against the, like, uh, fire department team. Oh, my God. And it was, like, 95% of the crowd was like, let's go, fire department. Yeah, for real. You know, it's so funny. Fun. As he like... drops the flare, she's like, and joke's on you. My carbon monoxide detector's <laughs> been beeping for two days. <laughs> Like, what? Oops. You fucking witch. He's like, you're sick. That's honestly the most I, disgusting thing I've ever seen. I would never life. do that. You have crossed a line, ma'am. Yeah. I love how she's so, still in her Bonnie and Clyde outfit this whole time. Well, that's why I love. And that's, I, again, going back, I did like about Halloween Kills. Like, jumps right in, just like Halloween <laughs> 2. Like, that's why I'm a little disappointed that what you said. I, I was, was really unaware. disappointed when I read that, yeah. I don't understand how they do that jump. I don't either. We'll I see. think you and I actually briefly talked about it. On You're right. I, that does kind else. of sound familiar that I, I feel like I've said that before to you. But like, I almost forgot gonna... about it until I reread it recently. Yeah, this is the scene I'm talking about. Yes. Especially with the way she's holding it. That's a great movie. It, really it is. is. It's fun. Way better on a rewatch. All right, that is the 2018 Halloween. Now, Cycli... I haven't seen the original one probably since we did our commentary, which is like four or five years ago. But knowing that this canonically really replaces everything else, where where do these movies? I don't maybe not necessarily rank for you, but I guess like because you can look at it a variety of different ways. Where is the Halloween franchise sitting with you at this moment? As we're what two and a half weeks away from Halloween ends, I think for me the Halloween franchise is what it is for me only because of um, its impact in the genre. I, I've never thought the Halloween movies were necessarily scary. I've never thought the Halloween movies were necessarily the best horror movies I've ever seen. I have found them fun. It's never bothered me about the retconning. It's never bothered me about like you and I talking about the four different versions that we can go through the storylines that we're talking about the flow charts. Um, I've always viewed the Halloween movies as fun. Mm -hmm. So, I don't, I, 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 in terms of where this one set the standard, I really enjoyed it. I'm excited about Halloween ends. I, Halloween kills was its own thing. I still think it could have been two movie story arc. Um, but I love the Halloween movies more so from where it represents. That's, it's a must watch on Halloween night, in my opinion. Yes. Um, if you're not, trick or just having on in the background, you know, or having on the background, it's just an iconic film that, no matter how you feel about this, even if you didn't like Halloween, you have to give it credit for giving us the genre now of slashers um, that we have 30, 40 years later. So how about you? The exact same way. I, I, you know, and it's interesting that like, I do want to find that flow chart because I almost think it was a sort of like a unique way to appreciate this. Now, the first movie obviously is canon in all of them and it's iconic and it probably a, 
I would say probably like a top 30 movie in terms of its effect on cinema of all time. Mm -hmm. And sure, to varying degrees of success, all the other movies have followed it. But like you said, if you're a horror fan and if you love this time of year, just like getting in the feel of Halloween and all the things that it entails, this movie is an integral part of that. I mean, this franchise. And I think this, the 2018 version uh, can certainly hold its head up high saying like we carried on that torch and in a lot of ways probably introduced it to a new generation which will never have the same impact as the first one just because it's we're so inundated now with these types of films but when the first one came out we hadn't had that before so 100%. it has it has a very unique and special place in it's, it's something i'm jealous of like i think the original was 78 ish i mean we had star wars in 77 you and i were not born for 10 years after that it it would be i don't know if it's sometimes like i think back to the, like the people who got to live those things and see yeah. fundamental genre changes and something like the what this brought into the 80s that again you and i didn't get to live what, what happened with the friday the 13th with the freddy kruegers um like, do you think people know. saw this movie and they were like more freaked out because they're like dude like a demon never shows up and like no one's possessed yeah it's just like that, a dude I mean, with a knife. Revolutionary. Yeah. And so for me, like, I'm envious sometimes of the time. Like, of, like I don't feel like we've gotten to see fundamental genre shifts in our lifetime. There was that moment where we were getting 3D films, but they just didn't stick. Um, I think we all knew that it was a flash in the pan. Yeah. And that's what's it, happening. It, it's just like there's an envy here when I think about the 70s, the late 70s, of what it changed. If you were a... 18 year old when star wars came out and a year later halloween comes out fuck yeah. man that's awesome do you think like on a smaller scale just because cause again we've kind of seen everything elevated horror kind of dips its toe in that or do you think it's sort of it's still too niche to really wear that badge at all it helps a lot i don't know it might be too niche but like it i don't know what movie we can point to that like change that you know bringing us the Babadook and like Midsummer and like all that kind of stuff, but like those are the two I, the exact two I was going to mention. Yeah, yeah, like I mean, there's a bunch of them, um, but like yeah, like I just don't know if there was a fundamental shift outside of like how you know, like we were talking about like Halloween was just something people hadn't seen before. Yeah, if anything, it really just like sp- helped a24 rise to prominence like yeah that's absolutely true like her the hereditaries of the world and things like that yeah yeah i don't know interesting stuff all right guys thank you so much for checking us out uh i am the mayor jeff hornacek that's our legal counsel ronnie cycling what's your term up as the mayor by the way it's gotta be getting when's my term up yeah well it's sort of like north korea on the ballot i'm the only person but i I keep winning the election so it's pretty great (laughs) i uh (laughs) I remember, remember that girl we went to high school with who was like ripping down other people's student council flyers that she was running yes. against? <laughs> yeah. That's you. Is <laughs> that is saying. me. I, I was like, God, I so much respect you. You're so... Yeah, like, I get it. You play the game. <laughs> 100%. You play to win the game. We're the bro Four squad podcast. Type in bro Four squad as three separate words pretty much anywhere. Google, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Amazon Music. You can find us anywhere. Check out everything on our website, bro4squad.com. We're on Twitter and Instagram, at bro4squad. Guys, it is the Halloween movie season. Let us know what you want to see us do next. Cycling and I will probably do Halloween 3, Season of the Witch, in a few weeks. I've never seen it. It'd be a so great dumb. blind commentary. So, Until then, uh, we'll see you out at the mall, either buying candy or buying butcher knives. You don't have to explain to yourself. Just have a good season. 